Thank you, Economy. It's my last audio book. When was that? 2011. I'm probably recording it in December 2010. I really don't have a mindset on, on social media. I do things, I look at things from uh, from this lens that I'm doing something fun, cool, and I find it interesting, and I want to share it, I share it. Uh, I'm usually of the nature of being more private than, than anything. Yeah. But obviously, <laughs> um, some people, and as I'm obviously talking to you, I've always been told people just want to see just the dumbest things that you're doing. Right. Uh, you may not find it interesting, but everybody else finds it just because it's a, a lens into your world and whatnot. So I'm getting a little bit more comfortable with that. And just so you know, just so I keep aligning things, and I'll get more detailed about this in 16, I don't, I don't He's not believe in anything. Thank you so much. Wow. Look at this. You too. Sir, when he starts a daily reaction. Oh boy. <laughs> it's really funny to edit. Yeah. Because I have to watch, I mean, I never watched anything of my own stuff ever yeah. before. Right. But I have to watch this. There's yeah. just so much. Right, I know. I, I see you sitting down. And it was like that part, you, like literally I watched that part and I was like, I'm gonna leave that in there because I think Jason's gonna watch it. I'm hoping, I'm hoping he's gonna be like, what did they say? Because for me it was easy. Yeah. I was going up against something where I would mark it and then I would see it come through the dot com shopping cart yeah. or my register in the store. Right. So I never had to debate the things that you have to debate. The big shock to me yeah. when I came into corporate America was yeah. reporting. Right. Miller Brown, yeah. Nielsen's brand left. Yeah. Yeah. Even the stuff that's been beneficial to our business, data logics. Yeah. Just reporting. You know, for me, when I do business meetings, it's kind of interesting. I, uh, I just so know where my intent and my skills are that I actually, um, not judge, but I size up the other side based on how they react to me. Because if it goes well, it means they're seeing what I'm saying. There's a belief on, there's an alignment on the religion. You've gotta back it up now. And then you put your, but I wanna put myself on the hook. Um, and I'm always so thankful when very senior people um, are not posturing to the history, they're, they're open-minded, they're, they're bringing their strong points of view as well, but it's like a, it's a fair debate, it's honest, it's, it lacks emotion, it's just business and, um, and it's just a great way to get the day going, to have, to have an invigorating, high-level, important meeting. That was fair. And by the way, if I don't get any business or if my business doesn't grow and I felt that was fair and that's happened in the past because I don't think what I do or what we do aligns with them, I also feel good. It's not about the win, it's about the fairness. Meritocracy, baby. Even at your own expense. Something that a lot of people haven't learned yet. On anybody who riding against. She said you done had a long day, baby, let me get up on. She know I'm a winner, yeah. She know I'm a winner. I'm a figure how to get up on top. Okay, okay. I'm a boss, daddy. On what you want. That's fine. Or, 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 or maybe I can see her over the weekend if she wants to stop by and see the kids. Because she's family friend with Dave, so ask, okay? Hi there, Gary. Rick. Rick. Again. The nice thing is, I, I'm excited is that the questions are already read. Yes. So it's going to be interesting to see. We'll put you on headphones. It's going to be. hear the questions. We'll be able to play the questions. Huge. You. And you know what's and crazy? I have a crazy idea. You know what's interesting? You want to talk about, you want to talk about why the audiobook? Huh. Okay, cool. I'm excited. I think this cool. is gonna go really well. We'll be great. Yeah. What's better than, uh, you know, it's actually really rad. How did I answer it in the book? How did I answer it in the audiobook? Like, what little subtle things changed in a three or four month period? I mean, if I could just sit and just answer questions, <laughs> done in four seconds. Come on in. Cozy. We're the few studios in New York City that has a window. <laughs> so you can be in there with a little uh, love it. human light in your face, it. which is I always good. I'm gonna take a second catch up on my life. Give me a second.
getting the iPad. When was your last audiobook? Thank you, Economy. Right? Thank you, Economy. is my last audiobook. When was that? 2011. I think it came out in March 11th. Okay. So I probably recorded it in December 2010. I'm rusty. <laughs> well, that's one thing that changed since five, five years ago when hmm. I got the last book. No, no more paper. paper. I don't know if you're going to need this. You may not want it. But that's a list of the questions of who's asking them and the order it. in which they come up. That's okay. so cool. Whether or not you want the, this page so that people will say all sorts of things. Like this, like literally everything's on the page? Yeah, on the wall, not often. Got it. And maybe not even open press. Yeah. But, Harper Audio <laughs> presents Ash is. Gary V. One on. Yeah. Uh, a little later, there's a Missy Elliott lyric. Okay. You can't sing. I won't. That's not an evaluation. Okay. <laughs> uh, is that people are actually reading questions and I'm answering them in the book. All right, so we're anticipating da, 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 da. some improvisation here, yes? But let's try reading. Obviously, you want to read the uh, I'm going to read, yeah, there's the opening setups. That's what we I'd will like to read, hear. and then when I was reading it myself, it was funny how I was, there was something interesting going on, which is I wanted, to, like, I improved eight to Eight to thirteen percent in my first two bucks. Here, I could see going a little, a lot more. Okay. This is now from a business standpoint. Sure. There is an absolute scenario here where a lot of people could end up buying both the book and the audio book. Yes. If I make them aware that I basically there's a difference. Look, this is more value. There's different. Then they some of these places. answers I gave a year and I mean, by the way, some of them I'm gonna I saw gonna I was already to. like things changed even when I couldn't change them anymore. Right. Andy Dalton. Right. <laughs> Very good. The, we've got a lot of material to do. We've got a lot to do. There's only one cardinal rule. Don't rush. When yeah. I listened to the audio that I, that was up on Audible for the, the last book. Yeah. Thank you. Pace was great. Great. We weren't rushing. Great. The big temptation is to push too fast. Yeah, I think pull back. I feel relax. very good about the time that we've allocated. I think in general, you'll see that I'll probably start a little bit too hard because mm -hmm. I'm excited. Of course. Um, but cool. Gary, can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly. Great, thank First you. Moments, All right, the wonderful moments. Love it. All right, so what I ask for getting levels and things of that sort. Uh, to the Vaniacs, it's the uh, first, it's the, it's the dedication, yeah. if you will. Before we do the... Yeah, yeah just because sure. I, but that's not going to give us enough sanity yeah. material. So let, let me hear you read that and uh, we'll get a level. Go. To the Vaniacs and the Vayner Nation, and all the people who have watched even one video over the last 10 years, your attention is my oxygen. Harper Audio presents Ask Gary V, One Entrepreneur's Take on Leadership, Social Media and Self Awareness by Gary Vayner Chuck. <laughs> Do I say the word acknowledgement? Yeah. Acknowledgements. Nothing I do is possible without the support of my family. My heart belongs to my wife, Lizzie, and my kids, Misha and Xander. At the time, I really did think I was done with daily video blogging forever. I could imagine the occasional interview or one-off video. Have you seen my Monday morning motivational spot? But a full show was too much. There was only one thing I didn't count on. You, the Vayner Nation. I missed you. Meanwhile, the emails kept pouring in. Despite access to three books and hundreds of videos, people still had questions how to successfully use social media, the new platforms, and the old standbys, to build their brands, or how to market with native content, or even just how do I do what I do. There was so much content I would there was so much content I wanted to put out to help them, but with all my other obligations at Vayner Media and elsewhere, I just couldn't get to it. And that's how. On July 31st, 2014, on a YouTube channel with 30,000 subscribers, one of the world's first business Q&A video blogs was launched. It opened with a guy in a blue striped golf shirt, smiling into the camera. Hello everybody and, oh, I forgot my intro. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the first Ask Gary V. Though the first episode started off almost as low key as its wine themed predecessors, 
By the second, the light and the sound quality were professional grade, and the host was bringing hard energy and straight thunder. At first I thought the show might be an every now and then thing, but it was like riding a bike. As soon as I filmed the first episode, I wanted to do more. And just as I could never run out of new wines to taste, there will never be a day where there's nothing new to say about the state of business. It's consistently evolving and growing. It's, it's a constantly? It's a constantly evolving and growing topic. One more, it's a constantly? It's a constantly evolving and growing topic. Good man. By the way, you're doing a great job, thank you. It's helping me a lot. Give me one second. Even though I wanted to get through that five, I just need a second. Okay. We're about 10, 15% behind. Understood. A little bit behind. Yep. Although I think we've found I, a I think we found so. them. Yeah. I'm sorry to break yeah. it up, but I'll I'll be up as fast as I can. Is there a bathroom out here? Yes, there is. You're looking, you're looking to jumpstart the conversation in a more healthy direction. Chapter one, clouds and dirt. I have a really, really good idea. I'm listening. And then I'm gonna really take your advice on this. I'm gonna read this answer, and then I'm gonna listen to it, and I'm gonna answer it. I have a feeling that we're gonna get a much better audiobook, and and go much faster, but not faster like speed, just like it's gonna come much nat more natural to me. With the second way of doing it, right, okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna read. I think that's gonna work, and I think it's gonna work consistently the shorter the answer. If you've got a four paragraph answer, it's gonna be harder for you to sort of recap it all ad lib, I'm guessing. It could be wrong. Interesting, let's, yeah. let's find out. Let's find out. So, How long is too long for a fiscally responsible entrepreneur to stay in a safe, full-time job? At what point do you have to accept that it's not going to happen? Is it ever too late to start? This question on the show created a firestorm after I answered what I still believe today. So with all due respect to all your collective feedback, I'm gonna go there again. If you work in a job, you are not an entrepreneur. Now I know that hurts and I'm gonna say it again. If you right now, as you're, as you're running through the airport or driving on the highway, are going to a job, you, my friend, are not an entrepreneur. You may have entrepreneurial tendencies, but you are not an entrepreneur. Now, let me take a step back, deploy a little humility in the bravado that I'm about to spit. Being an entrepreneur, a purebred entrepreneur, the way that I see it, this is one man's point of view, this is the Ask Gary V book after all, is somebody who doesn't even have the ability to have ever had a job. The reason I was an F student, and, and I, I'd like to think most of you realize at this point, I'm no dope, I'm not a dummy. It was because I couldn't deploy going through that machine, which was built to go get a job, and I wasn't honing the skills that I knew I had to have to be who I was, and I knew this at nine years old, at 12 years old, at 15 years old, at my junior year of high school, I'm sitting in science class reading The Wine Spectator. I'm doing that because I'm prepping to be a wine merchant because I was an entrepreneur. There was nothing else. If my dad didn't have a liquor store, I would have built on the fact that I was making $3,000 a weekend selling baseball cards in the malls of New Jersey as a 15-year-old. You don't think I could have lived on 36,000 a year for working 52 days a year? I sure could have. And so that's who I was. There was nothing else. Now. A lot of you hmm? said this is unfair of me, this, that, and the other thing. What I want you oh. to know is my definition of an entrepreneur should not be yours. You want to think you're an entrepreneur because you do what I said and crush it and come home from 7 p.m. to 2 in the morning and build a business? You want to tell me about the fact that you have student loans and you have to pay them off and that's why you have to do it? I get it, but I would flip it on you. I think an entrepreneur works on their entrepreneurship and then works at 7-Eleven from 11 p.m. at night to six in the morning on the graveyard shift if they have to be practical because you have to understand. And you have to understand, there is nothing else. It's like telling a, a, a singer that they, they can't sing, they have to sing at night. There is nothing else, you're drawn to it. You can't breathe, it is your absolute oxygen. You are an entrepreneur when you are building your business at all times. And let me say another thing.
This is not 1992 anymore. It is actually way more practical to be an entrepreneur than it's ever been before. If you are 22 years old, if you are not willing to sleep on the floor with nine of your buddies in a studio apartment, then you are not an entrepreneur. If you want to get a job because you want a watch, or you want a car, or you want to be able to take out girls for a nice dinner, then you are not an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur does entrepreneur things, and that is by definition building a business for yourself. Period. End of story. Cool. Cool. The notes helped me quite a bit on that one. Good. I'm taking the notes a little more seriously, and I think it's going to be really impactful. Every system is different. What are the likes? If you want to say skill, because I've been honing them for 32 of my 40 years, then you can say skill. That was kind of cool. That was cool. That was a good one. Okay. How long is too long? Wow, man, this, this notes thing is crushing. Got 10 more minutes. First uh, 15 questions that come in via Snapchat right now, I will answer. Just had dinner with my folks and Lizzie and Misha. Now about to start another meeting. Gotta go back across the street in a little bit. Reading made me tired. Uh -huh.